Apple TV sent me something. <laughs> I'm so excited. No one's ever sent me anything before. Um, I already know what it is. I obviously opened it already, but this is more fun to do it this way, right? So I will show you guys what it is. I wonder if you can guess what it's about or what it's from. <laughs> if you follow my channel, you should have a pretty good idea. Can you tell yet? <laughs> I'm like seriously giddy about this. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm just like, it's just, I don't know. It makes you kind of feel a little bit like, hey, you guys notice that I talk about your stuff all the time. Ba, 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 ba. Look at that pretty box. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? Um, inside the box is, it's a poster. It is a beautifully embossed poster. I mean, come on, look at these beautiful people. Um, this is obviously the perfect gift for me. So I'll be back in just one moment. Okay. Firstly, thank you. Totally love it. Little note, little, just, just a little recommendation. Um, this poster was non-standard size. This is the size of a standard poster frame. The poster. <laughs> I had to cut it up. Um, and there was a lot of force required in getting the backplate on. But it's on. So. <gasps> what do we think? It fits perfectly, doesn't it? I love it so much. Um, I've been looking for a something to like go in that like spot has been a lot of white space over there for ages so this is ideal and I have no problem with having it up there because it is the best science fiction show on tv today but do you know what would go perfectly around here like what would fit in just beautifully prime radiant um I bet you got a few of them knocking around got my address now send me a prime radiant I love it. I love the visualization of it in the show. It's just so exciting. But anyway, we are going to talk about uh, foundation today. We're specifically going to talk about whether you can predict the future with maths. Da, da, da. So let's talk about one of the most influential topics in all of science fiction uh, from the golden age of science fiction. Now, the golden age of science fiction is uh, from basically the time period that John Campbell was the editor of Astounding Magazine. John Campbell is the one who essentially discovered Asimov, Robert Heinlein, L. Ron Hubbard as well, yeah. But John Campbell was the one actually originally who was really fascinated by the concept of psychohistory. So let's get into Isaac Asimov's Foundation series and a fictional field of mathematics. Are you familiar with my work, psychohistory? In theory, but I don't know what it has to do with... Oh, it's not a theory. It's the destiny of the human race expressed in numbers. So starting with what is psychohistory in the world of foundation. Now, in the foundation universe, psychohistory is invented by a mathematician named Harry Seldon. You can think of it like statistical physics, but for societies. So Seldon argues that while you can't predict the actions of a single person, you can predict the behavior of large populations. Over millions or billions of people, individual randomness smooths out. Patterns emerge and then with the right maths, these patterns can be modeled, which means that in theory, you could forecast massive events like the collapse of an empire. And that's exactly what Selden does. He sees the fall of the galactic empire coming and he predicts that there will be a dark age that's going to last 30,000 years. So he sets up a plan to shorten it to just 1,000. 1,000 years, dark ages, no problem. The plan is the foundation. Now, outwardly, it's a group of scientists compiling knowledge, basically creating an Encyclopedia Galactica so that the emerging second empire will have all the knowledge of the previous one saved. So the plan here, or the plan put forward, is that preserving our knowledge would lead to a smoother transition between the fall of one empire into the beginning of another one. But is that really the purpose of the foundation? No, <laughs> the foundation is the second empire. 
And to keep it on track, Selden then creates a second hidden group, the Second Foundation. And it's their job to secretly steer the events in the background when the maths alone stops working, which it inevitably does. So, if psychohistory doesn't even work in the books, could it ever work in real life? And of course the answer is no. There's no known branch of mathematics that can predict the future of civilization. We don't have formulas that can tell us when a political collapse will happen or what cultural shift is about to hit next. A lot of us can infer things from history and context of what's happening in the media, but the thing is, in reality, human systems are complex and we are driven by all sorts of unpredictable forces. So originally Asimov was interested in writing a future history and that was influenced by Edward Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Now his editor at the time, John W. Campbell, the editor of Astounding Magazine, leader of the golden age of science fiction, was obsessed with the idea that psychology could actually be a hard science. And so they combined those ideas together and then wrapped it all up in the language of statistical mechanics, which is a language I speak. I learned statistical mechanics in the third year of my physics degree. Uh, it was one of our courses. I really enjoyed that course, actually. I really liked my lecturer for that course. He was a great lecturer. So statistical mechanics is it's basically a mathematical framework that we have in physics and it's a way of modeling the behavior of large groups of atoms or molecules and it's done using probability theory and statistical methods. And it works really well for, for a bunch of different areas but specifically for chemistry which is significant because if you didn't know this Asimov was a chemist. He had a doctorate from Columbia University and he actually did work in academia for quite a few years before he moved to writing full time. Now, I haven't read anything where he like states that he based psychohistory on statistical mechanics, but it makes sense. The idea of predicting the influence of a single molecule in a gas is really hard, but predicting the collective behavior of all the molecules together, that's statistical mechanics. So the first Foundation story was published back in 1942 and modern physics was only just being established. So there was real interest at that time in turning the social sciences into something more rigorous. So this idea that there could be a field of mathematics that would provide a way to um, use our, our understanding of history to model how society would progress, to me anyway, perfectly plausible for the time period. It's been over 80 years since then though, since that first story was written, and while there are some very fringe groups that have adopted the term psychohistory to push some form of pseudoscience, seriously, it's actually wild, there's no branch of mathematics that can actually achieve what Harry Seldon and the Second Foundation achieved. But we do have tools that feel a little bit psychohistory adjacent. So, you know, like I said, statistical mechanics, we've got statistical modeling, and that is used from everything from public health to economics. We also have agent-based modeling, and this is where simulations track the interactions of uh, individual agents to understand group behavior. This is really interesting. I actually did my master's uh, research project on multi-agent simulations. So network science as well and social physics, this is uh, ways to analyze how ideas, trends or behavior spread through populations. And of course we have chaos theory and complex systems which study how tiny differences in input can lead to huge changes in output. But like psychohistory, these tools have limits. They can highlight trends, they can simulate scenarios, they can show you how likely something might be, but they don't let you direct history or force an outcome or predict exactly what will happen. And Asimov knew this, right? He knew that and he put that uncertainty into the story. And this is why psychohistory doesn't work. Not just in the original trilogy, but why he knew originally, before we even set up the foundation, that psychohistory alone wasn't going to work. 
So in the original serial stories that make up the Foundation trilogy, psychohistory is treated a bit like prophecy. I guess the people who are um, looking at the Selden plan don't fully understand what psychohistory is, so they just see it as some kooky prophecy. It predicts crises, uh, sets the terms for them, Selden appears as a hologram, says this is what's going to happen next. The events do play out, the Foundation makes it through the crises, faith in Selden is continued to a certain point. But in the prequel books, especially for the Foundation, we see just how much it didn't work. Selden spends decades trying to make the maths line up. Now he has a theory, but reality keeps getting in the way because human behavior won't stay still long enough to be solved by an equation. There are too many outliers in the data until something new shows up. And that's his granddaughter, Wanda. You see, Wanda has a unique ability. She is what Asimov calls a mentalic. She can emotionally nudge people. She can guide them ever so slightly towards a goal. Now it's not mind control, but it's enough to shift things and to control those outliers. And this is what makes psychohistory viable in the way that Selden envisions it. It's not just about the equations, it's the equations and the addition of people with the ability to influence others. And that's why the second foundation exists. They're the secret fixers, the ones who step in when the maths starts to fail and they keep the plan on track by subtly adjusting the variables using nudges, persuasion and behind the scenes corrections. So even in Asimov's original story, psychohistory doesn't work by itself. It only works with a secret failsafe, the second foundation. So anyone who's a bit confused by the Gal Dorna character should hopefully understand now that Gal in the story is actually merged with Wanda. And we started off with the idea of Gal Dornick going to Terminus to set up the first foundation. And then we merged that into Wanda Selden, who can look at the Prime Radiant and see the equations. And she can intuitively feel things that are wrong in the equations. She can identify outliers. She can identify issues. Now, the mule is an outlier. And that's the story that we're going into for season three. And the point of the mule is that the reason the mule is an outlier is because the mule is able to influence large groups of people. So the mule as an individual is able to cause an influence to large groups of people, which then throws the equations out of whack because it's an unpredictable influence that wasn't there originally. And the rest of the way that the story is playing out, I guess they're just, they're just finding ways to be able to keep characters with us so we don't have to jump through it in the way that they do in the, in the books, which would just become really discontinuous and uh, hard to follow. But that is the point of psychohistory. Asimov's, if you actually read through the rest of the books and you read all the way through to Foundation and Earth, which is kind of the end to the story, but it's also not technically, I don't think of it as the end. It's the end to the story that we have. But um, as far as I know, Asimov said that he would write these stories for as long as he wanted to. And so, from what I can tell, the only reason we don't have another story beyond Foundation and Earth is because he died. So I don't think he wrote it as, he didn't write, he definitely didn't write any of this as a complete story. It was never intended to be a complete story. He moved things around, he played with ideas as he went along. So the original trilogy, Psycho History, that idea comes from John Campbell. John Campbell pitched the Psycho History idea. He wanted to explore it, the idea of you know, psychology and uh, human behavior being able to be, or the social sciences being rigorous and hard things that you could predict. Asimov wanted to write a future history. So he wanted to write about like the stagnation and the um, collapse of an empire. And then the refueling and the building up of a second empire and, and what that would all be. So psychohistory was never really Asimov's vision. It was John Campbell's vision, who was his editor, brought into this original serial story that Campbell would say, I want a new foundation story, write me a story. So Asimov would just write a foundation story. And then when Asimov went to write the novels himself, you'll notice the shift. 
if you read the prequel novels and you read the after novels, you notice how he shifted from a focus on psychohistory to something else. And I mean, we get it in the serial as well, because we get the second foundation and we know who they are and we know like what their purpose is. But it really does go there. When you get to Gaia at the end, that's where you really see what Asimov's true vision of a complete empire or galactic uh, union would be for humanity in the future or evolution of humanity in the future. And that's the really interesting part of it. So in terms of psychohistory, it's not science, um, but it is science fiction at its best. And the Apple TV adaptation is one of the best sci-fi shows out there right now. I, I will fight anyone on this. It is an incredible adaptation. I am so excited to see what's going to happen with the mule. Um, to see how they play out what happens to psychohistory when we have an anomaly in the data. One that can influence the course of events and put the foundation at risk. And I honestly cannot wait for season three to start. And I can't wait to see Hippie Cleon. Come on. <laughs> Do you know what I'm hoping for, for my book nerds out there? I don't know if they will, but I'm sort of, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I'm kind of thinking they might turn Cleon into the Trevise character. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm getting a feeling that that might be like in terms of a way to keep Lee Pace and keep Cleon in the story if they merge Cleon into Trevise. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You can argue me on it. I would, I would love to see that though, the, if that was where, where it might lead to. Anyway, that's it for Psychohistory for this week. So if you want more explainer breakdowns where, you know, fiction meets real science, uh, you know where I am. Like, subscribe, uh, that would be great. Um, if, you, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, if you're liking these videos and stuff, and if you want more, you can let me know. And yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm still not good at this outro stuff. And thanks for my poster, it's super pretty. So yeah, okay, cool. I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs>